Um, uh, yes, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Chris Hammond. I'm uh, the, uh, one of the founders and the CTO of Narrative Science. Um, and what Narrative Science does is um, uh, it has a technology, a platform, uh, that writes stories from numbers. That is, we take data and we transform that data into stories. Uh, and the stories we write are indistinguishable from something that a human being would write. Now, before narrative science, and actually I'm on sabbatical, but so currently with narrative science, um, uh, I was a, uh, on the faculty at Northwestern University, uh, and I had two roles. I was in the computer science department, data, uh, and I was in the school of journalism, stories. And the company is, in fact, a, uh, the company and the technology is a partnership uh, between computer science and journalism um, in a way that uh, a lot of, a lot of um, narrative-structured companies are not, or a lot of companies that are doing, looking at this kind of problem are not. Um, and as a result, uh, what we do is we do things that actually um, make sense in terms of the human side of the equation. Um, now, this whole workshop, this whole conference is about data. So you love data. I love data. We all love data. Uh, but sometimes data can be daunting. And in fact, uh, our very, one of our very first uh, clients uh, was a, as a B2B publisher uh, in the real estate, uh, in the real estate uh, uh, industry. And uh, we went in and we were struck by how much data uh, uh, he had. Uh, and in fact, we were struck by how beautiful the data was. Gorgeous graphs, wonderful tables, fabulous charts. Uh, and there was a moment where we thought, there's no rule, there's no room for us here. There's no role for us here. Uh, you've all, they've already got it covered. They're communicating everything about the data that they could possibly communicate. And in fact, I said to uh, our contact at the time, um, I said, I take it from what you're currently publishing that your customers are incredibly data savvy. And he looked at me and he smiled and he chuckled. And he said, are customers data savvy? Of course not. But data is what we have. Uh, and so they are a client of ours now. And we actually generate uh, a, a, good, a good chunk of content for them based upon their data. So how did we get here? Well, it used to be that we were data poor. Um, it used to be that there was nothing for us in terms of data. Uh, but then the world slowly changed and then quickly changed. Uh, and more and more data, data about real estate, data about finance, stock market data, healthcare data, sports data, all began to come online. And, and everything became wonderful. We were bathing in data. It was a fabulous world. Everything we ever wanted in terms of data was available to us. Everything we could think of in terms of data is available to us. Everything is there. Of course, very few people want everything. And so we're in a new world. We're in a world where we're surrounded by data. We have to fight the data, and we're drowning in the data. So as we talk to customers, they give us the following things. We collect everything on how each of our accounts is performing but we only have the people to explain it to our top 10 customers. You don't get the game from the stats. You get the game from the story they tell. And if I could spend a half hour with each of our clients and their data, I could improve all of their businesses. And these are comments from people who we work with who are wrestling with the data that they have, either because it's come online or because as the world changed, we began to realize that we could monitor and meter everything um, and gather masses of business data. But the reality is we don't want this. We don't want graphs. We don't want connections. We don't want the data itself. What we really want is this guy, this guy who can look at the data and explain it to us. And so what we do as a company and what we do with our technology is we take, take this guy and we bring him to the machine. And the machine takes his rules, his understanding of the data, and turns it into text. For example, 
Uh, this is uh, the smallest of small snippets uh, from uh, an organization we work with that collects data, point of sale data, for uh, a very large uh, fast food franchise organization. Um, uh, they uh, collect data on a minute by minute basis for every single transaction done in 14,000 uh, 14, restaurants. Um, uh, they collect it, they spent tens of millions of dollars figuring out how to collect it, both on the hardware and the software side, how to organize it, how to hold on to it, and then the question is, what are they going to do with it? It turns out that the people who own fast food restaurants really don't want to look at ream after ream of data. They don't even want to look at the individual spreadsheet that was designed explicitly for them. And so what we do is we take this data and we turn it into the following. The launch of the bagels and cream cheese promotion began this month. While your initial sales at the beginning of the promotion were on track with both your ad co-op in the region, your sales this week dropped from last week's 142 units down to 128 units. Your morning guest count remained even across this period. Taking better advantage of this promotion should help to increase guest count and overall revenue by bringing in new customers. Now, that's a piece of information for one guy, right? One guy out of all of that data. And in fact, what we do is we take that information, we take that data, um, we ingest it, um, we apply statistical analysis to it depending upon what the, uh, what the domain of interest is. Um, and then from an editorial point of view, we ask the question, what is the story that can be told from this data? What can we communicate from this data? And to whom are we communicating it? And once we have that, and we have a representation of what we want to say, then we say it. And that is, we map that onto English, uh, we map that onto language, and we produce um, a report, we produce a story, uh, we produce content. Um, the reality is, is that it's everywhere. No matter where you look, there is data that we are struggling with. And we are struggling with it because the data is usually gathered from the point of view of a broad spectrum of possibilities. But no one wants to look at the data from the point of view of a broad spectrum of possibilities. They want to look at the data from the point of view of their interests, their goals, their needs which leads to the binder. Uh, we were having a conversation with uh, the VP of, of strategy uh, for a very large, if not largest, uh, uh, financial news organizations. Um, and we were actually talking to her about generating finance sto stories in finance. Um, and in mid-conversation, she said, maybe you could help me with my binder. And it turns out that once a month, she gets a binder. And that binder is filled with spreadsheets. And I said, well, what do you do with this binder? And she pointed across the room to this. And she said, I don't need a shelf full of folders. I just need a two-paragraph summary of the stuff that's important for me. And time and time again, both in terms of the media side of what we do and in terms of the business side of what we do, the issue is no one is genuinely interested in the data they're interested in the story that the data tells. And the reality is stories are the bridge, the bridge between numbers and knowing. And what we do is we tell the stories that are hidden in the data. Thank you.